how to communicate with a destructive narcissist without losing your ever-loving mind. In today's video, I'm going to teach you exactly what to do and what not to do when you've got no alternative but to engage with someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. So you can stop being so easily triggered, stop giving your power away, and instead keep your self-esteem, your dignity, and your sanity intact. Hello, beautiful souls. Tammy M here of TammyMCoaching.com, empowerment life coach and creator of the Freedom Class. And what I want to talk to you about today is how to communicate with a destructive narcissist, a person who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, lacking in empathy, lacking in conscience, feeling entitled, even irrationally so, to behave in the most vile and appalling ways. Sometimes we're left with no choice but to communicate with these folks. So how do we do that in a way where we're fully not selling our soul to the devil. That is what we're going to be talking about today. But before I begin this video, I just want to quickly announce that we do have a few spots available in the calendar this week for the free one-to-one -one consult with either myself or a member of my team for the Freedom Class program. So if that's of interest to you, be sure to stick around till the end of the video for the announcement on how to enroll and register for that free consult. And with that, let's get started. So let's talk about how to communicate with someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. Again, in a way where we're not literally selling our soul to, a, to the devil, right? You know, as much as I way prefer to just go either low contact or no contact, in other words, simply choose to not engage once i determine that an individual that i've been dealing with lands on the spectrum of destructive nar narcissism by virtue of their attitudes their behavior their noxious and toxic you know tendencies etc once i determine that that's the case i have learned over many 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 years and countless experiences with family of origin with friends with people at work you know with people at large i have learned that really there's nothing that I can do in terms of twisting myself into a pretzel, um, you know, to affect change in the other person. They are who they are. They're going to do what they're going to do, right? So it's ideal if we can just go low contact or no contact, but the truth is that's not always an option. The truth is sometimes we're co-parenting with these people or we're working with these people or for you know any number of reasons having to do with family or other obligations or a sense of duty or we're just not there or just not ready yet, um, we're choosing to continue to engage. So you know that's a personal choice, always, always a personal choice. And really when it comes to communicating with this type of individual, it boils down to what can I do or not do? What can I think or not think that will reduce or eliminate the negative effects of their toxic and destructive attitudes and behavior, right? Like I can't turn myself into a pretzel enough to change who and what they are, but I can control what's going on in my own mind, in my own heart, in my own attitudes, in my own behavior, in my own energetic force field, what I do have control over in my own little bubble, right? I can control that so that, again, I can reduce or eliminate the negative effects of their noxious attitudes and behavior. So the very first thing Number one is acceptance and knowing your audience. When you consider that the individual that you're dealing with lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, meaning they're lacking in empathy and conscience, it's wise to keep that in mind when you're going into any sort of communication with this type of individual, when you have to engage with this type of individual. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is don't expect empathy from someone who lacks empathy. Don't expect a conscience compassion, kindness, sincere, genuine love, support, a sense of safety and security. Don't expect empathy and a conscience from someone who has shown you repeatedly that they lack 
empathy and conscience. So it's vital that we accept the truth, tell ourselves the truth about who and what it is that we're dealing with and know our audience, know who it is that we're speaking to and set ourselves up with realistic expectations accordingly. Someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, no matter who they are in your life, whether you're married to them, they're your parent, your sibling, your boss, your neighbor, whoever, someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism is not suddenly going to grow empathy or grow a conscience just because you want them to, right? So it's vital that you know your audience and you accept that they are who they are, it is what it is, and that is your starting point. Starting from there, telling yourself the truth. Next, be prepared in advance. It's important that you know upfront that this type of individual is running their own agenda. It is their agenda always to win, to look good, and to be right, no matter what at all costs, even at the cost of your well-being. Your well-being, your comfort, empathizing with you, caring about what's in your best interest or you know the higher good for all concerned just isn't on their radar. They are always going to be coming from a what's in it for me perspective, no matter what. So be prepared for that in advance. And again, in advance, you want to be coming from a place where you can remain grounded, clear, confident, firm, but not confrontational. In other words, if you're in a highly emotional state, highly reactive because you've just found out that you've been seriously betrayed and you're feeling deeply wounded or you've uncovered some really awful lies or you know whatever it may be. If you're feeling highly emotional, this is not the time to engage with, to communicate with someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. So be prepared in advance. You want to enter this type of communication when you're not highly emotional, when you're able to hold on to yourself, again, stay clear, stay grounded, be confident, be firm, be concise and succinct, and deliver information. Coming from that perspective, prepared in advance, I'm simply here to deliver information with realistic expectations with regards to who and what it is that I'm actually dealing with. So get psychologically prepared in advance. Communication with someone who is lacking in empathy, lacking in conscience, feels entitled to hurt you, harm you, lie about you, lie to you, betray you, etc. This is not a time or a place to be opening, your, opening yourself up and making yourself vulnerable. So again, be psychologically prepared for that in advance. You don't want to go in highly emotional and really, um, you know, intending to pour your heart out in the hope that this time you'll be heard and this time you'll be seen and this time you might be understood and nurtured and cared for, etc. Not going to happen with this type of individual. Opening yourself up and allowing yourself to be vulnerable is, you know, very conducive to healthy communication and relating and really is foundational to long term, reasonably, he reasonably healthy, relatively um, healthy relationships with people who don't land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. So it can be counterintuitive if we're trying to get our needs met and we're trying to be seen and we're trying to be heard, we're, you know, often going to go in there um, utilizing the kind of tools and strategies that we normally would when we're dealing with someone who isn't a narcissist, someone who is reasonably or relatively healthy and emotionally available and capable of being present and hearing us, et cetera, right? But that's not who we're dealing with in this type of a situation. So don't open yourself up. This is an individual who can 
and will use your disclosures against you to hurt you either immediately or down the track so if at all possible avoid giving them that kind of ammunition you also want to be prepared in advance to set healthy limits and boundaries. This is vital when we're dealing with someone who has a tendency to exploit us and or others, right? So if you haven't developed the skill of learning how to set healthy limits and boundaries, it is critical that you begin to learn to do so. And this is, this is a muscle that can be developed. You know, there was a time in my life where I wouldn't have known a boundary if it rolled right over me right and today I am very very good at setting healthy limits healthy functional limits and boundaries with anyone in my life whenever I feel the need I don't even you know it's become uh, an unconscious competent skill set that I have developed over many years and I and trust me if I can do that you can do that too if this is a skill set that you have yet to develop, you can check out my video here on how to set boundaries with a narcissist to begin to learn how to develop that skill set for yourself. But that's vital. So again, be prepared in advance when you're going in to set healthy limits and boundaries with this type of individual. If you've got no alternative but to communicate with them, to engage with them, this is a must. Now, next, as I alluded to before, you want to do what is counterintuitive, actually the opposite of what you would normally do if you were in a relationship with or dealing with, engaging with, communicating with someone who is reasonably or relatively healthy, right? The attitudes and behavior that we bring to the table with an individual who actually shows up fully present emotionally available perhaps not perfect you know we're all you know a work in progress perfectly imperfect human beings but there's a big difference between someone who actually has the capacity to have empathy understand the impact and consequences of their attitudes and behavior on others and gives a shit actually cares about um you know the effect that choices or decisions, et cetera, that they may be uh, engaged with or making the, that effect, what that will be on you or anyone else that, you know, is in their vicinity, right? There's a big difference between that person and the person who is lacking in empathy, lacking in conscience, landing on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. That individual Again, it's just not on their radar. So for us to walk into this type of a communication with this type of individual employing the same strategies, the same techniques and expecting to get the same result is actually another form of insanity, right? We can't expect a snake to behave other than a snake, right? Like don't go into a room with a snake and expect the snake to behave like your, your furry little kitten or your cute little bunny rabbit. Not gonna happen, right? So again, counterintuitive. When we are dealing with people, communicating with people who are reasonably or relatively healthy and have you know the heart and soul and compassion and can show up and hold space and really have good intent in the relationship, here's a list of what that looks and feels like. And I'm going to run through this. I've got my notes in front of me because I, 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 I don't want to miss anything. And I want to bring you maximum value today for this conversation. But, you know, I want to go through this also because often we're trying to do all of this with someone who not only is fully and constitutionally incapable, they don't want to. They just don't want to. So when we're dealing with someone, communicating with someone who is reasonably or relatively healthy, what that looks like is both people are maintaining mutual interest and respect, right? In the conversation, even if it's a difficult conversation, especially if it's a difficult conversation, you know, sometimes we've got to have the hard conversations with people and, you know, someone whose heart is actually in the game with you with good, positive intent for the highest good of all concerned, you, them, and everyone else, they're going to be willing to maintain, <clears throat> excuse me, maintain mutual interest and respect. 
uh, giving the speaker undivided attention. Whoever is speaking is allowed the opportunity to express themselves and they aren't being disre uh, disrespected or demeaned. No one's passive aggressively looking at the other person and rolling their eyes, that kind of toxic nonsense going on, right? Um, reasonably relatively pe reasonably and relatively healthy people are going to be willing to screen out distractions you know if you're in a relationship with me and we need to have a conversation no matter how big or how small you've got something that you need to say to me a message that needs to be received you're going to get my undivided attention because that's what reasonably healthy, loving, kind, compassionate people bring to relationships, right? They're not engaged in a whole bunch of other things, giving you a fraction of their intent, of their attention. They're going to give you the due respect of standing still, holding space for, you know, however long that takes, right? Now, that doesn't mean that, you know, we're going to allow ourselves to be held hostage in energy draining conversations conversations that are circular and going nowhere and you know that's not what I'm talking about here I'm talking about when we're dealing with people when we're communicating with people who are relatively healthy they're screening out distractions they're treating you with respect they're looking to understand they're as Stephen Covey would say seek first to understand before being understood right um, there I, I think I might have paraphrased that not perfectly but you get the gist, right? Seek first to seek first to understand before being understood, something along those lines, but you get the gist, right? So, you know, uh, in addition, letting the other person finish their thoughts or statements without interrupting. Now, especially if it's a heated conversation or a tough conversation, we've all had you know the tendency to interject sometimes you know i've got a really good friend of mine who i love and adore and the two of us get together and we just we're so aligned in so many ways we just talk incessantly for hours and you know there are times when we talk over one another or finish one another's sentences or you know um interrupt and we do so lovingly and with respect it's never our intention it's really just coming from a place of insight of excitement and i get you that is not the same thing as being controlling manipulative um, and unwilling to allow a person to express whatever it is that they need to express two very different things right demonstrating genuine and sincere empathy concern or compassion Listen, if you're trying to communicate with someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, you're going to be clued into that pretty quickly because when you're trying to have the hard conversation with them, there will not be a tendency or a desire to je demonstrate genuine, sincere empathy, concern, or compassion. They're going to be far more concerned with saving face, protecting themselves, being right, winning, etc. Unless, of course, they're in the love bombing stage where they're, you know, in the the process of fully emotionally manipulating you but that'll be very short-lived and that behavior will be so inconsistent they won't be able to back it up with consistent predictable reliable capacity to show up with compassion and empathy and genuine sincere concern for you your well-being what it is that you might be you know experiencing etc both parties leaving the conversation feeling heard and understood, right? If you're communicating with someone and really giving it your best shot, and no matter how hard you try, no matter how many times you return to that conversation, you walk away feeling unheard, misunderstood and therefore you know fully that you're being misrepresented because they can only hear whatever it is that they've decided they want to hear and it could be all kinds of things going on with an individual where that would be the case but if you're really playing full out and showing up with your heart with the intent to communicate like a mature 
reasonably relatively healthy adult and no matter how hard you try you're just you know you just can't get through because there's some sort of for some reason la 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 going on it's a big clue that you're dealing at the very least with someone who's got their own issues great big huge going on if not someone who actually lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism one way or another you have to recognize that a, you know communication with a reasonably relatively healthy adult is going to include the capacity to hear and at least attempt to understand the other person's perspective if you're dealing with someone who is incapable of doing that not a good sign experiencing the absence or the absence of or very infrequent blaming shaming and or criticism if you can't have a tricky, uncomfortable, difficult conversation with someone in your life without feeling criticized, blamed, and shamed, you're dealing with someone who's lacking in empathy, lacking in conscience, who has so much of their own unresolved shit going on, so much garbage in their shadow that, you know, the walls are up and there's no getting through. There's no getting through. Huge exercise in fertility. <laughs> Did I just say fertility? In futility. Huge exercise in futility. Sincerely attempting to understand each other's perspective. That's what reasonably, relatively healthy people who are in it for good reasons, who, you know, are, you know, um, uh, concerned with your well-being as well as their own right? Uh, they're going to, you know, have a desire. They're going to make a concerted effort. They're at least going to attempt to understand where you're coming from. Even if it makes no logical sense to them, that's okay. We're not under any obligation to make sense to other human beings. But when we care and we have compassion and empathy, we're actually going to be willing to go out on a limb and attempt to understand where the person is coming from, their particular perspective, right? Not making deliberately misleading statements, lying by omission, or using truth out of context to manipulate perceptions or the outcome of a conversation. You know you're dealing with someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism when they are making deliberately misleading statements, lying by omission, using truth out of context to manipulate perceptions or the outcome of the conversation. When, you know, when the right fight, be right, be seen in a certain light, what have you, you know? Someone asked uh, on Facebook and in, in, in one of the groups the other day, uh, you know, how do I know if a, if a narcissist is lying and it's sad, but you know, the truth is, you know, it's, I say it in jest, but you know, there's a lot of truth to what we say in jest often, right? You know, if their lips are moving, chances are good. They're lying by omission, using truth out of context, lying outright, you know, manipulating perceptions like that just is the reality. It is the modus operandi. When we're communicating with reasonably, relatively healthy people, People are willing to be real, authentic, and vulnerable. In other words, they're willing to let their true self be known. Now, you know, in my eight-week transformational coaching program, one of the first things we touch on is understanding the difference between safe and unsafe people. And as I alluded to earlier in this video, when you know you're dealing with a destructive narcissist, opening yourself up and being vulnerable and allowing your tender, wounded inner child or your true self to be known and fully pouring your heart out is a very dangerous game because that's all going to come back and bite you in the ass if it hasn't already. Many of you have probably already had the experience. Wish I knew then what I know now. There's a lot of conversations that I had with family of origin, with, you know, ex-romantic partners, with so-called friends in the past, colleagues, etc., a boss in particular. <laughs> That I, you know, a mentor uh, slash boss that I worked with for many years, lots of conversations that would never have been had, had I understood the difference between safe and unsafe people. Today, I know the difference. There's a great big, huge difference. So, you know, where it is, you know, 
intuitive to show up in that fashion in a sincere, genuine, heartfelt desire to connect and relate. We're hoping for healthy relating. It's not going to happen with an empathy deficient, consciousless, entitled, manipulative, toxic individual. So vital that we separate the wheat from the chaff there and take care of ourselves. It's our job to take care of ourselves, setting healthy limits and boundaries, you know, owning the fact that we're not little kids anymore. We're adults now. And it's not because someone asked us a question that we have to answer it. It's not because we're, you know, looking to bond that we need to attempt to latch onto and bond with people who are actually quite dangerous and destructive, right? Really, really vital that we learn the difference there and take care of ourselves accordingly. Backing up your words with action. Don't just say you care, but actually demonstrate it through choices, behavior, and action, right? Um, someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, overt or covert, they're gonna be real freaking good at the words, real good at the words. And there's going to be little to no follow through. And if you have not yet begun your own healing and recovery work, you're probably going to be quite eager to believe the words, right? You're going to be quite eager to buy into the BS narrative that you're being sold for a whole bunch of reasons that are beyond the scope of this particular video. But suffice to say, that when we're communicating, engaging with people who are reasonably, relatively healthy, you're gonna know it because they're not just gonna say they care, they're gonna actually back it up. For example, you'll have a real tough conversation, something that you need to work out, sift through together, you know, and uh, you might be quite emotional in this conversation, you're dealing with stuff, whatever it is, right? So we're having one of those high voltage, intense conversations. A healthy person isn't just gonna say, I love you, I care, I, I care about your feelings, I'm sorry you're struggling in this way, here's my truth, I'm doing my best to understand your truth. They're not just gonna say those words, they're gonna demonstrate that. For example, perhaps reaching out the following day, how are you, how are you feeling? You know, demonstrating. When I said yesterday, I actually care. I actually care. Why? Because you're still on my mind the following day, because I'm backing it up with action one way or another. To a limit, to a degree. Listen, if you're the only one putting in the effort, extending the olive branch forever and ever, if you're the only one making the investment of backing up your words in action, it, you need to tell yourself the truth about that, right? You need to sell, tell yourself the truth. Um, when you're dealing with someone who is reasonably, relatively healthy, has empathy, has conscience, you're going to notice there's going to be a certain amount of backup and follow through behind their words, right? When you're dealing with someone, again, overt or covert, landing on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, you're going to notice that they're real freaking good at the words, but there's almost never any follow through or they're Words are here and their behaviors here. The two never meet. Like they they just, you know, the behavior never actually matches the words. You know, I have, uh, well, she's not in my life anymore because, you know, my recovery, therefore my personal integrity and self-respect won't allow for it. But, you know, for a lot of years, I had a stepmother in my life who was really good at the words but for four freaking decades, her behavior was the exact opposite, you know, real good at saying, I, I love you and care about you, but her behavior repeatedly for four straight decades with a few exceptions for sure. You know, there are a few exceptions where I might, you know, but if I, if I, if I, you know, look at the, the entire experience, there's a couple of exceptions with mountains of ev evidence to the opposite, right? <clears throat> mountains of evidence to say the words and the behavior are not aligned. They do not match. So, you know, pay far more attention to what someone does than what someone says, because 
Words are easy. Words are so easy. And when you're dealing with a relatively healthy person, like I said, they're going to be backing it up one way or another. Now, you know, with self-respect, we don't, we don't need to, you know, chase after people and, you know, prove and prove and prove and prove and prove. That's not what I'm talking about here, but healthy people have the capacity to show up consistently, reliably, and predictably in a way that backs it up, baby, that backs it up. Now, you know, unfortunately, communicating with someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism is going to lack many, if not all of those, and therefore our communications with them are going to be very frustrating, dissatisfying, often excruciatingly painful, like really hurtful and sometimes even damaging. No matter how much time, effort, or energy we pour into it. So vital, like I said, that, you know, what is intuitive in terms of how we think we should be showing up in what would be a healthy relating situation. If we know we're dealing with someone who's lacking in empathy and conscience, you want to go the other way. You want to do the opposite. You want to certainly close yourself off a little bit, protect yourself. You know, when I am engaged with someone heart to heart, full on, right? I'm seeing and hearing them. They're seeing and hearing me. I'm heart to heart with them. When I'm dealing with someone I know is an energy vampire, someone whose tendency it is to exploit, manipulate, harm, destroy, um, run denigration campaigns, suck the vital life force energy out of me and others, especially those of us who are highly empathic. You know, we have this experience a lot. I have learned to simply do this. If I have no choice but to engage with someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, I am not opening myself up to them energetically. And all I have to do is this, turn my body. My heart is not heart to heart with an individual whose heart is entirely closed off anyway, and they're really just looking to siphon my vital life force energy out of me, I am shielded to a large degree and protected simply by shifting my body in this fashion. There's lots of things that you can do to take care of yourself. Like I said before, setting boundaries, um, learning to take care of yourself when you have no alternative but to engage with someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. There's a lot of things that we can employ. I touched on many of them today. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a skill set that needs to be developed here over time and with practice, but you can develop this skill set. And much of it, you know, boils down to just knowing the difference with regards to dealing with healthy people and dealing with narcissistic people. And we must learn to deal with these two types of individuals very differently. What we bring to the table of relating with a healthy individual is not what we want to bring to the table of relating with someone who is going to manipulate, attempt to manipulate or exploit us. Two very different games here. Now, a couple of final points. First and foremost, do not defend yourself. If you're in the habit of defending yourself whenever you're engaging with someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, it's time to stop and literally go cold turkey on this behavior. When you get into the place of explaining over-explaining, defending yourself, defending your perception, just defending how you feel, defending what you did, didn't do, said, didn't say, what they did, didn't do, what they said, didn't say, defending your reality, you are playing right into their hands. You're playing right into the game. They want you on the defensive, right? As soon as you defend, you, you start defending yourself, you're dancing like a puppet on strings, they've got you. They've got you right where they want you. Um, it is how they literally hook into you and begin to siphon your vital life force energy from you. So make a decision, again, be prepared in advance, right? Know who it is that you're dealing with and decide before you even go in that no way, no how you are going to defend yourself, no matter how much they may be um, 
attempting to gaslight you and otherwise cause you to doubt your reality. You know what you live, you know what you heard, you know what they said, didn't say, did, didn't do, etc. right? So when you've got someone who's attempting to cause you to doubt your reality, this is not the time to defend yourself. This is not the time to argue and fight and get in there with your ego trying to win the right fight. This is the time to back up and go quiet. This is where silence is uber freaking powerful. No way, no how am I, am I going to hand my power over? No way, no how am I going to play the game of defending myself? You want me on the defensive so that you can manipulate me, you can watch me dance, you can drain the vital life force energy from my soul. I walk away having a three day hangover to recover from after this conversation and you feel amazing because you're literally filled with my life force energy. No way, no how. That is a dance with the devil that you no longer want to do. So decide in advance you are not doing that. If you find yourself compelled to defend yourself, go silent. Breathe. Hold on to yourself. Feel into your body. Remove yourself from the conversation if need be. If you're unable to remove yourself and silence is not an option or for whatever reason, you know, not quite appropriate, one word, super succinct responses. Oh. Okay. Or I see. Silence. Silence in this situation is more powerful than anything. So again, no defending yourself. Hang on to yourself and your vital life force energy. And the final point that I want to make is document everything. And this is a big one in particular for those of you who are struggling with, you know, big family of origin issues with a, you know, a highly narcissistic family or co-parenting with a destructive narcissist or, um, you know, involved in a custody battle in particular with a destructive narcissist. Document everything, every email, every text, every message, every voicemail, everything that you can document. Look, the truth is if you never need it, so what, right? But taking that little bit of extra time to document everything, if you ever need it, so powerful. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a situation where it's like, um, here it is in black and white, those texts that you sent me, that conversation that we had in Messenger or whatever, you know, however, you know, many weeks or months ago, there it is. Pretty hard to argue with black and white, right? So take care of yourself and document everything. Again, if you never need it, so be it, right? Like no big deal. But if you do need it, you'll be really, really grateful that it, it is that it is there. My friends, I'm going to call it a wrap. If you liked what you heard today, if you got some value out of this, remember to drop a like and a comment. Let me know what your biggest takeaway was. If you're new to the channel, a great big huge welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. So happy to have you here. Remember to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos throughout the week. And as I mentioned at the top of the video, um, we have some spots available in the calendar this week for the free one-to-one -one consult with either myself or a member of my team for my eight-week transformational coaching program, The Freedom Class. So if that's of interest to you, check out the link in the description below where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with us. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about this tricky area, this tricky arena of, you know, having to communicate with someone who lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, you can check out my video here on how to talk to your narcissistic husband without going crazy. That's a good one. And another one that's super, super popular is powerful phrases to disarm a narcissist. So you'll want to check that one out as well. And with that, I'm going to leave you with this. Know your value. Know your value and unlock your freedom. Much love. Bye for now. Yay!